We're here at DocCon 2017, and I'm here with Betty Janaj uh, from Docker. And can you tell me a little bit about yourself and your background and how you came to be at Docker? Yeah, so um, I'm a, I run product marketing here at Docker, and I've been here for about a little over two years, so about half the time the company's been around. Um, prior to that, I spent a number of years at uh, VMware doing similar things, but always, you know, systems management to virtualization and now containers. Right. So Docker's made some announcements in the, the past few months. Can you tell me a little bit about what's new? Yeah, so uh, in, earlier in March we made an announcement around Community and Enterprise Edition. And it's really, it's an evolution of Docker as a platform. Uh, when we first started, we were, um, we were pretty much for like Linux developers only. And over time that audience has grown. You know, there's more developers, different languages. Um, operations teams have started to use it, and then increasingly over the last couple of years, enterprises. And so what we did with our recent announcement is create the right tools for the right audience. And so we have Community Edition and then Enterprise Edition. And Community Edition is really meant for our open source developers and operations folks, um, people who are very do-it-yourself um, and they want something that moves fast. And so there's, an, and it's free. So it's um, a repackaging of our open source products. And what that does is it's aligned to also open source infrastructure like Fedora, um, CentOS, and whatnot. On the enterprise edition side, it was really thinking about what do businesses care about? And that packaging is really aligned to the type of infrastructure that you know, maps to what enterprises use. So Windows Server, Oracle Linux, RHEL, those types of infrastructures, as well as um, uh, AWS and Azure. And what we've done there is we've spent the time to integrate and optimize how Docker runs on that target infrastructure. So, you know, an admin just needs to install it, and they don't have to worry about um, all the little configurations that they need to set to make it work better, work well on one operating system or another. So, and as part of that, we've done certification. So when we integrate to the infrastructure, that's a that certified infrastructure that um, is part of Enterprise Edition. And then um, in March, we also announced a certification program for third parties. Many of the companies that you're going to see um, on the expo, expo floor this week, they can certify their um, software as well as their plugins um, as containers, and they're available on Docker Store. So that provides a, a level of confidence for uh, an IT organization when they're you know buying if they buy Docker, and then they're like, I want to get you know this storage driver, this plugin. They can now, just have, get you, that. have you seen a lot of adoption from the enterprise customers? Uh, you know, there's a lot of people are traditionally starting to use, they've been using VMware for years, and, mm -hmm. and now they're starting to you know to transition to containers and other um, types of virtualization stuff. So, have you seen a, a like a, a increase in the curve of adoption in the enterprise market? Yeah, so um, we have a lot of enterprise customers, and when you look at the DockerCon agenda, um, the vast majority of the organizations speaking are enterprises. Um, folks like ADP, Visa, MetLife, um, they're all speaking at DockerCon, DockerCon, sharing their story of how they've implemented Docker in their environment. Um, that doesn't preclude the use of virtualization. Um, right. It's part of the infrastructure, and I, what, um, what Docker allows them to do is you know, VMs abstracted from the hardware, Docker allows them to abstract from the operating system on up. So now they have a way to kind of, they just have more options. Um, so we have seen, you know, containers on bare metal, containers in VMs, um, we've seen a range, and we've also seen a mix, right? Because you could have, you know, multiple containers inside of a VM, and that is your template, right? Or you could right. have, um, or could, you could use a compose file as your container template. I think it really is, just provides more, more flexibility um, for the admin at deployment time on how they want to handle their infrastructure. So what's some of the, um, you know, we talked about VMs versus uh, mm -hmm. containers. What are the big differences that you see between, you know, using a traditional VM versus using a container? Yeah, so um, what's interesting is we always get like, isn't this just a lightweight VM? And no, it's different. Right. Um, mostly because architecturally, containers share the, um, many containers on a host, on the same host will share the kernel of that operating system. Um, whereas in a, with VMs, the VM itself has a full copy of the operating system. So it, 
what you can get with a VM is on a, on a single physical box, you can have five different operating systems running on that, right? Because they're all inside of a virtual machine. I mean, that's why it's effectively a machine, right? Mm -hmm. In the container world, um, if you had one server um, and has, let's say, you know, Linux running on it, it can only have Linux containers. So um, the isolation is at the kind of application and code level, not at the full machine level. Kind of like the old old school uh, user mode Linux. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what's some of the cool things that people can check out while they're at uh, DockerCon? Yeah, so we have, um, well, there's something like 50 amazing full breakout sessions um, led by uh, Docker engineers diving deep into the technology. Um, various customers and um, leading open source users about how they're using Docker to, you know, build amazing new services, do uh, genomics, big data processing, or taking, you know, legacy apps and kind of cons converting them over time to be microservices. And we also have folks in our ecosystem presenting in their tracks so you can see how their technologies are working with um, containers and hands-on labs. The keynotes, um, lots of great, uh, exciting stuff coming in the two keynotes on Tuesday and Wednesday. Those are live streamed as well. We're looking forward to it. So it'll be a good um, time. So we're gonna we'll post these up on our website as well with uh, links so that you guys can check out the live streams and see what's happening here. Um, but we're looking forward to a busy and fun week. Should be fun. It was great meeting you. Nice meeting you as well. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the uh, convention. Likewise.